Hello, everybody. We're live. I'm I'm doing some uh, live LSDJ telemel. Wait, what did I decide to call it? I tried to standardize the name of it so that it would be one thing. I think it's LSDJ Telemelt Live. That's what I decided. And I'm here with Dot Exe. Hey. Thanks for joining me. Well, yeah, no problem. Sorry. Or you said uh, you might you might have a couple of ideas. Yeah, um, I've uh, well, there's a couple things. First of all, I have have like barely used LSDJ nine. Oh so, yeah. Um. I was hoping you could show me around a little bit. I also want to see what samples you have, <laughs> uh, which uh, I'm assuming you have not just the default samples here, right? Yeah, no, and the palette is this. Pa this isn't a default palette either. I re I really like it though. I don't know where I I might have made it or who knows. I loaded this up with with a bunch of samples a while ago. Um, that's my chords kit. Um, there's a bunch of Lewis Cole drum stuff in here. There's another, at least one other random drum some kind of thing. There's this little memes thing. Do it. No! Yes. Wow. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Those all sound like they distort well, which is really all I care about. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> Microtonic, this is my... I made this like... This is like the first kit I ever made for LSDJ, and I still use it. It's just like so much fun. And yeah, a lot of these, I, I did clip them. But don't, in order for, to get sample distortion to work, don't you have to, don't you have to play two samples? Because it's got to go, it's got to mix them above the, the highest amplitude. Yeah, I'll, I'll worry about that. <laughs> okay. Just, how, how I just, many for the, for the, for the, for the audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, so you said, this is the one that was the first sample kit you made. Yeah. Oh, what's the what? Like, where do these samples come from? What's the story behind that? Um, there is a really cool um, drum synth VST, if you can even call it that, because it's capable. It's 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 like if you had a, an eight hundred eight or a nine hundred nine, and and all of the parameters, all of the like synthesis parameters were available. But the ranges were turned up to like absurd, you know, value ranges. So like you can just get some really crazy sounds out of it. Um, there's a really cool website called Patter Patternarium. Um, I'll post a link to it actually because it's it's fun to play with even if you don't have the microtonic um, synth. But basically, they they created this. Um, it's just sort of like random, randomly generated or pseudo semi-random generation of like patterns. And then um, people vote on which ones they like. And then the algorithm like learns, like, you know, tries to make stuff that caters more to, to the votes or whatever. So like it, it kind of slowly evolves. Um, and then you just get these cool randomly generated beats. But I didn't use those per se. I don't, I don't think. I think I was just tuning the drum synth parameters to try to get some interesting, like a, like the that one, the first kick, I really like a lot. Um, yeah, the kicks are great. And then there's just some other, like the random triangle sounds and other stuff is just like, it's a little bit less typical than what you would get out of like an 80s drum machine. These kicks are all great. The, that, yeah, that's, these are from some Earthworm Jim samples. I think, I don't remember if I got them from Genesis or Super Nintendo. And then you got, uh... This is another drum kit. Have you actually, I, I don't recall hearing those in any of your songs. Have you <laughs> used that in anything? We, we might have used it, P uh, Puel and I might have used that one and the mal Malicious Machine Malfunction, because these are the same samples that we had. <laughs> yeah, that one I, I probably should have known those. Used, I've used that one in Super Science, and I, it's like kind of just, yeah, I need it. So that's uh, that's your kits. Yeah. So, um, so you have a little bit of whistle call there. I should probably uh, play that for anyone who doesn't know. These are awesome. I definitely recommend following 
Um, it is it is Lewis Cole, right? That's his name. Yeah, yeah. I recommend following him on Twitter if you don't. He's great. Probably not exactly captured in these samples, so these are great. But... Oh, there we go. That's yeah, that's him. Yeah. Um, so for someone who hasn't used LSG DJ nine a whole lot, what should what should I know? Um. Uh, do you remember like the last one that you did use? Was it like version eight, maybe? Yeah, version eight. Um. Uh. Let's see. I'm I'm trying to think of what was different. Maybe I'll just go down some of the instrument parameters. And so, like, you've probably seen the envelope before. We've got the nifty new visualizer, which maybe you haven't seen yet. So you can actually, like, maybe better understand what you're doing when you, you know, change uh, instrument volume. Um, let's see what else. I don't know if you noticed the fine tune. It used to be, like, zero through F. It's now a full byte, so the previous value of zero one is now one zero, so it's just a finer like you've got extra resolution and fine tune. Um, uh, let's see what else. I'm trying to th uh, the noise channel stuff is probably the biggest you know revamp where uh, you've got these two modes that are both selectable through the pitches, so like zero through three eight or something is are these long loop noises and then once you go outside of this range then you get like the or what is it 3b then you get the like notes so uh that means you can do like smooth p command sweeps and stuff like that um which was not really possible to do like with all of the um things in order without using a table. Um, I think you probably have seen this this nonsense <laughs> where you can go up past 295 now. So this is 299 or 2x screen refresh. And then you could do 3x screen refresh and 6x. I have no idea how same boy handles this, but... <laughs> so uh, maybe it's fine. I don't know. Um, so there's that, which is crazy. Um, what else? Just, there's other like minor changes and stuff, but nothing really like, nothing really, I think the noise channel is probably the biggest and the, the sample stuff, but that doesn't really, it's just, I'm trying to think, nothing should look like super like out of place. I guess there are, there, are, um, there are a couple of changes in the wave, the wave synth. Um, some of these values are a little different like these different phase things are different um the uh we have a new synth mode which is resync which is that thing where um the wave channel works like it does in version four uh no silky wave and playing at high speeds creates that extra tone in the wave channel so you can do you know uh What's a good example? Like. So he kind of like, he added this back in so that you don't have to use the table and use the R command and all that kind of stuff. Other than that, like there, I don't think there's that much that's really that different. The screen map is a little bit different, but uh that's that's probably about it and then it's it's just a lot like faster and snappier that was the thing that struck me like going back to version 7 i was like uh it's so slow and like the screen just feels a little bit sluggish so yeah i feel free to do your thing maybe we can go This is why I wanted to know what samples you had to, uh, 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 I want to try like a dumb 
single channel uh, jam with your. Oh, sweet. At least that's how I want to start it. Yeah. Uh, I dig this already. Just loop this for the next 45 minutes is what I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like you don't even need to distort this one. Just put it to uh, half. Uh, uh-huh. Can you maybe, well, I don't know, I, not to interrupt this, but at some point I think it would be cool to talk about that where you're using, like, the inverted waves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the this is, just, this is something I try out, like, every time there's a change in how waves are, are processed, and for a while it didn't work. And then I think in, like, version 8 it started working, where... Uh, yeah, you go with a wave channel, and then uh, I barely know how to navigate between <laughs> screens. And then you just go, you go all top, and then gonna go to wave F and just transpose that to the bottom. So it should go like top, bottom. Right when we change it to length uh, two or length one, right? Length one, yeah, yep. So you get a little bit of a click. So now, if you change your ping pong to resync, oh, to resync, yeah. It should be slightly more reliable. And you can see like this is just this is just generated by the wave engine, this tone right here. Like the note we put here doesn't even matter. So what you can actually do I'm gonna switch it back from recent because I don't know how the, this part is gonna sound with recent. But what you can actually do is you can like put a carrier signal on top of this. I don't that's probably not the proper term. So we can like have a tiny little wave here, say something like like this, and then we mirror that in. Um, sorry, that's we mirror this in the top top thing, and now you actually you actually do have the tone. So what you're hearing is just that top note, while that bottom just like. Um, Wave engine buzz comes in. This is how I did. Uh... Oh, geez, I forgot the name of my old trash. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that for? Uh, um, ultra Acid. Yeah. Oh, okay. I needed a sound right here. Oh. I copied it. Oh. oh yeah. yeah. Uh, this might this might change the top. Actually, I was gonna play with changing the tempo. We have a. Yeah, you can hear how changing the um, changing the tempo doesn't change the actual note itself, but it, it messes with the speed of the wave engine. So it, it changes the underlying uh, underlying sound there. Yeah, changing from ping pong to resync should, in theory, like uh, raise that that, um, and it should be a little more consistent because like with ping pong, it's just like flappier because it's waiting for the waveform to play like. Even though it's kind of, or no, I think it's, should it matter? Maybe it shouldn't matter. I, don't, I think it um, should be a little more stable in resync than it would in ping pong. That's my guess. But it may not end up really changing the sound that much. I don't, it's I actually feel like using this... two, it's using more than one of these frames at once, right? Yeah. 
It's just, it's relying on the little click when it switches from low to high. I don't know, I feel like, I don't think this worked oh, what pretty... If you, uh, what if you change the speed from four to three? Or... Oh yeah, I forgot that works too. Now, now bump the tempo up. <laughs> no, or maybe, or maybe don't. I don't know. I'm curious about what like 295 sounds like. But maybe you want it to be that low. So this is, I mean, that's interesting in in higher channels. There, I, I mean, um, you can kind of hear. Like, uh, when it's slower, it can't really sustain whatever it's doing there, but yeah. It, it doesn't surprise me you get, like, a square wave tone out of that on the new super tempos. Yeah, well, you could change the waveform to be just those, you know, all zeros to, like, have a slight curve or something in it, right? I don't know if it would make any difference, though. Yeah, I forget, I forget what that does. Let me just... I think that just makes it less clean yeah that's probably right is this too far out of your your wheelhouse do you feel comfortable messing around with this oh yeah no i i guess you probably didn't see the, the stream that puel did and i or puel and i did a couple of days ago where it was like just trying to do as weird <laughs> as many weird things as possible more or less Oh, really? It was just one big, like, yes and. Like, should we modulate to a weird time? I was like, yeah. <laughs> should we, I don't know, do something obnoxious here? Yeah, for sure. Should we write a melody? Um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> We're not going to have any of that here. No, no melodies. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about. I feel like there was one. I don't know. I, I don't know if this was something you actually said, or if I thought of it later, or something you told me somebody else said. But it, I was trying to talk to you about like how to write this, like the kind of stuff that you do, which is so noisy but like also groovy. And you you said something like you have to you have to think like <laughs> you have to write write music like you're writing with your butt or something. <laughs> I, I don't think that was me. <laughs> that's maybe that's like what how I interpreted whatever you told me. It's something like you have to. It's basically like writing butt music or something. <laughs> well, whoever said that, it was it was accurate. To be fair. <laughs> um. So, do you remember another? I think you actually you came up with this. Do you remember? The other hint for making music like this is just do something different every four bars. Oh, four yeah. I was about so, to say something about that. But so you want to... Go ahead. Do you want to try to do uh, do something different here with this next four bars? Should, can I hand it over to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. The, the thing that's cool about what you do, though, is like it's not just um, repeat the, this and then have something different on the fourth bar, and then repeat this again, and then do something else different on the fourth bar, and then repeat, the, you know, it's like, you've got this way of, like, bringing in ideas, like, and, and like, like, th then this fill will somehow lead into, like, the next four bars, or, like, there's, I don't know, it's really well structured in that way, because it's like, it doesn't just uh, do the same things over and over again, but it develops, like, in a very natural way, which is, I guess how butts write music. <laughs> yeah, that came out. That came out of like ignorance of how songs were written, and I guess being sheltered from electronic music. Because I heard you know, but probably many people don't know that I was influenced by this musician called um, Beast Mode, and Beast Mode came on the scene and just started making this like heavily distorted electronic music. And for years, I just, I tried to figure out what he did. And you have to, like, come at it from my perspective. Like, I had barely even heard electro or house music before. So just trying to, and I, I mean, I barely knew how to write normal music, if at all. So just, I just came at it from the perspective of, like, 
how do I make things sound so um, smooth and cool and just try a million different things. And part of that was like, I wasn't comfortable with making a sudden change in my songs. Like I had, everything had to lead into something else. Everything had to be telegraphed. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I, I developed this like really weird um, feel for writing songs. And I've, I've worked more on my fundamentals now, but yeah, probably some of that still comes through. Is it the kind of thing where like you'll write something different and then go back and change like the previous thing to telegraph what like the new thing that you've done or do you find that it like mostly happens like writing in order and like only changing small things gradually until like okay well now i have a new section and it just kind of evolved or is it maybe both um it it's kind of both sometimes i'll find it sometimes i'll go back sometimes i'll like overload a section with so many ideas that like I'll either labor over it for years or I just like have to scrap it. That was like why I quit chiptune for a while too and why I had to work on my fundamentals was like, I would just, I would write myself into corners so often. Yeah, that's, I, I've done that before too, but sometimes it is nice to like put it away and then come back to it. I'm gonna, do you think that it makes sense at all to just combine these two into one? Um. yeah, oh yeah. I guess that's a weird uh, that's a weird habit I have of just I mean I don't necessarily think it's right or wrong or whatever but it does make me like a little bit nervous when I only see four <laughs> it just also <laughs> depends on what grooves you're writing at and stuff like in relationship to other channels or whatever but it just makes me think also it's kind of it's easier to see more stuff happening when yeah that's in one so then I know. Okay. And, and like, maybe we could even have, like, two bar phrases and stuff so that if this was, um, um, uh, is there, do we, is, do we have any reason not to have this on step mode? Because this, this is, like, an easy way to just add variations to notes and stuff. Ooh. This is already sounding like a .exe thing. Oh, yeah. Something like that, maybe? Um, yeah, what I would suggest, what, what I'm hearing here for true fun music is, um, <laughs> You've you've made it too smart. See, that's the problem. <laughs> um, what I would what I would normally do is I would like uh, introduce this idea. Of, we'll steal this film for now. Introduce this idea for um, this pattern, and then you see what I mean. You can go from one 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 uh, two two one two one three. Oh and that, no! That that makes it a little easier to di- digest. Uh, just turn. Actually, actually, I don't even need to do that. Just put this here so that doesn't play. And then you would have like a glitchy noise here. 
Is um, it, that, that that's the butt music formula? <laughs> well, yeah, let's do it then. Okay. I mean, we don't we don't have to stick to it, but I think it is cool. Um, it it just it makes things easier doing it live. Have like just using that framework and not doing anything crazy unless I actually think of something. Normally, <laughs> what I would, normally what I would do is I would try to subvert it as much as I can, but. Oh, right, also, yeah. I also heard, if you don't mind me messing with this. It's yeah, no, like, please. Um, I heard a bass kick here. I want to see how that sounds. Oh, yeah. And then that just leads back into the... Gets you back into the groove, I think. Right, okay. I wasn't really paying attention to the kits, the kit instruments. This is really like a sample manipulation workshop. <laughs> oh, that's on, sorry, that's on, what is that on? This right, is on, the, so, the P is on step mode, so you could either just continually do PFF over and over, or maybe put no, it in the table. I think, I think what we can do, I don't know if this, this works. But. Yeah, it does. Just change it from step to, fa to fast. Yeah, or tick, either one. Oh, does that kill it? I guess you oh, do we have retrig the notes? I guess. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh. Okay. What we can do is that'll sound okay. Yeah, that sounds fine. <laughs> It's it's basically the same as putting it on the actual instrument too, like you can just have it um, loop, like loop that one, you know, and set the length to two or something like that on that kit. If you didn't want to use a table, um, I did not want to use it. Oh, so let's see. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Getting yeah. Show me, show me what you mean. <laughs> so instead of this, like this hopping back to the beginning, you can just set loop to on and then length to whatever you want to loop. Oh, right, right, right. So uh, that, you just have to re-trig whatever this was. This is going to be the same. Oh, but it's going to paste that instrument. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not exactly the same, though. No, because that, the other approach freezes it right where it is. Um, so I think if you get rid of the note, it will still work. Try <laughs> uh, well, oh, oh. Oh, but it's not going to do the same thing for the table. But right. Ask, ask Actually, the table. no, what you can do is an F command there. Here? Yeah, that's what you can do. And just put it like, it should be like one or two, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, do we need to have the loop on? Uh, yeah. And then, uh, do we need to have a length? No. Thank you. Well, oh, that table, actually this, sounds better. <laughs> this table's already running. So, well, this is... Know what really happens? That is really cool. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give it back to you. <laughs> I'm glad we're all here to learn something today. <laughs> and uh, it's normally where you go off the rails. <laughs> so rather than rather than doing like a one, two, one, three. You do like a one, two, three, four, or even like a one, two, three, one or something. Oh. So, something that just like keeps it um keeps it moving. And after that you might like do another variation on this pattern and then just like completely switch it up, or you might just completely 
switch it up over this. At having um, four of uh, like four of these patterns, four measures, whatever you want to call them, would be better, but three is Awesome. So now you're talking about actually making every bar different? Yeah. It's still be a point. I'm I'm just feeling it out here. It might still be able to one, two, three times. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, but then something like crazy on the. I don't know. Mess with the sound. Oh right, this is still on. Uh, yeah, I'm not used to it. Yeah. Well, hey, it works. I thought that some, maybe uh, V commands like stop working on kits, <laughs> but that's clearly not true. Oh wow. Well, that's great to know. Uh, I want to hear it in context. Of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Effect. Play it from the top. This is awesome. This is so cool. I don't. Uh, I'm usually too. I don't know what to. Just too hesitant to like repeat stuff that much. But when it's when it's just a groove like that, repetition is really powerful. Oh yeah. Because yeah. it really creates like it helps to really just drill in the expectation of what's going to happen. So that makes like subverting it that much more like it gives it that much more impact because you're like this pattern has already been established a set number of times that is more than just one uh do you want to try to do something with this uh, second half of the measure here yeah yeah well i'm, I'm not going to say what i would do i can always go back and fix it but <laughs> it, it, all right oh that came out wrong i can always <laughs> go back and do like the obvious thing but like, I would rather see what you would do here and then maybe get some new ideas out of it. Okay, okay, okay. So, all right, let's play it one more time. Also, by the way, I didn't know that moving this down here would not play it. That is- Oh yeah. So you could do the same thing here and then like, it's just gonna, okay. That's actually, I didn't know that. <laughs> here uh or do i okay i don't know what this one means do you ever use this command <laughs> on kits no what, what does the tooltip say Move kit loop points. Oh, I think it's when, oh, you're, when you're looping. Yeah. So my length is set to all here. But at this point, I'm like, we could just clone it and then set length. So it's like you're setting your length and then you can move through the different loop points. Let's maybe try something like that. And this also on. So that way, you know, you can move these. Like it's it's looping a different part of the the snare sample. Of course, it was... but I thought there was a com I thought there was a command that actually changed the loop length. Oh, maybe that is what this does. Ah, uh, yeah. So you can move the length. You can shorten the length. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Because like F would be the one where you would actually move through the frames, right? 
Yeah. Let's put this here. I'm happy with that. Now fix it. <laughs> no, it's perfect. <laughs> perfect for leading into a super dumb outro session. <laughs> That's what I want. You know, we so, gotta we gotta label these instruments because I'm losing track of which ones which ones are which. But oh right. yeah, I never I never my way of working with LSTJ is like I never label anything. <laughs> I'm okay with very like similar um, instrument tones, but yeah, we can. I'm always fine with cleaning it up if if you uh, if you like. Oh wait, how come this is volume two instead of um, volume three? Oh, oh, that's to give the um, the I did that intentionally. I get, that to get the, uh, the distortion more room or more volume or something really the, <laughs> the, the kit's more room to breathe because that would have that would have like zero bite if uh if if that were volume oh. three this too whoa like, okay i somehow like missed that yeah, that's just, DJ that's... Tell them out live more like let's dj face melt brain melt live <laughs> yeah even this is like more than i'm used to like in terms of like getting deep into the sample stuff, but I always felt like that this is where like the the wave channel, like all of the potential lies here, basically. Like potential yeah. to do really new, cool, interesting stuff, and like it's cool that you've hit that, like hit upon it. Um, or you could just copy Beast Mode. Um. <laughs> That's not easy, you know. I've listened to some Beast Mode stuff, and like, um. There's like a serious like treatment of dynamic range and beast mode stuff. Like it sounds like a, a, there, there's that one, I forget which one it is, but it's like, there's like just like a constant like kick hat, kick hat. And it's like nothing crazy. Like it sounds like very much kind of middle range volume stuff. Like, yeah. Cause like what you're saying, like the, the sample distortion stuff has a tendency to get really loud. But like when I hear beast mode, I'm like, I don't even understand how this is possible at like a lower volume. It's just like, it would take me a long time to try to figure out anything even close to what that was. Even if I try to copy it. Yeah. I, I, I get the impression that he dabbles in volume two a lot. Mm. Actually, normally what I do is I just, I, I deal with volume three and I would normally not just be doing a pure, one channel track like i would yeah um i would boost this up with like some pulse kick and then some noise stuff too which is not a very subtle way to do this but this is easier live and this is actually probably better so that's true yeah um because yeah sometimes sometimes i go crazy with the multi-channel stuff and just like keeping everything in line while writing the song and experimenting is just like way too much <laughs> so do you tend to write like channels like channel by channel then as opposed to like fleshing everything out four channels at a time no i i, I have the bad habit of fleshing everything out four channels at a time. <laughs> well yeah because it, obviously like when you're talking about repetition now you've got this other dimension where each channel can repeat or not so then you've got to like decide which channels are going to repeat or which ones aren't or like how much is okay to be different or whatever. However, you're, I guess it's just, yeah, whatever expectations you're trying to subvert. I kind of like the mode, the attack mode, you know, the loop mode. Can I talk about it for a second? <laughs> yeah. I'll just, um, uh, be complex. Okay. I got to figure out what keyboard mapping that is, but, um, Nip hardly likes music did a video on this, but where you, you can actually set the loop to a third mode, which is attack. And then you can set the offset 
and it will play this much of the sample and then when it gets to this part in the offset it'll loop whatever you have set in length so you can like keep the attack of your drums but then loop it's more useful for some Like that's kind of cool. Or... <laughs> Harley uses it to make like a, a kick bass, like combined kick and bass. That's just a totally different thing. Let's put it back. I'm looking for a totally different. You just want, um, um, like just the glitch here. Oh, okay. Pretty much. So anything will work as long as it's shocking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So maybe the, this was the right area. Oh. That's kind of awesome. Here, I'll send it back to you. You can mess around with it a little more. It like that goes here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you also want to do something. So I didn't like actually solve the problem. I just delayed the problem. <laughs> no, I think I think you. I think you made progress. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. I've started to do a little more sample stuff just because... Actually, it was a song I was literally working on this morning, and it was like doing this kind of thing in the sample and like repeating an idea bef You know, at the very beginning of the song. I was like, I need to introduce this somehow. So I kind of like took every brought everything out you know like dropped everything out and then used some of the sample stuff at the beginning and then brought everything else in i would never write a whole song of just this crazy sample stuff <laughs> you are right now though yeah i know See, that's the other good thing about uh, hovering around um, to volume is you can always do Oh, you can kind of... of... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say... Here, I'll take over again. Um, you could always do this kind of a thing, or, you know, depending on where you want this to go, too, like, you can like kind of do this like gating like a gating effect or something uh and i'm not sure if this would work better to be faster because it might be um two three two etc you know or maybe even like one Yeah. Um, and then, so this is a super dumb lead in to like a totally new thing, but um, normally what I would do is so the fourth, the fourth measure in these kinds of patterns tend to be pretty. Um, it tends to be getting on like the fringes of repetitiveness at this point. Mm -hmm. So I like to introduce like a little unexpected thing here, like a, um, a maybe an extra bass hit somewhere or like just like a single, uh, a 
single offset sound or like um, a, a section that repeats one more time than it's supposed to. So I, I just have to hear this one more time to see what it wants to do. The, ob the quote unquote obvious thing to do here is something like this. Um, just something simple like that. I wonder if. Um... I wonder if you could do, where was that, here? I wonder if, I wonder if you could make the first kick of snare instead, or is this gonna sound terrible? <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. Maybe one bass and one snare. Now that sounds like too subtle. Are these the same? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, toms. <laughs> oh, I like that. I know. Oh, yeah, that, that's good. All right. <laughs> uh, and now we need just kind of a... For now, we if we're following the bug music formula, we need to just kind of abandon this. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Do something new, completely new here. Do you it, do you have any ideas for like a new section, or can I just go ahead? Oh, feel free to go ahead. Um, if I hear something else, you know, I'll just steal the controller. Okay. Um, yeah, that Tom thing. Beastmon actually uses Toms a lot more than I do, so. So That's a maybe. thing where I, I feel like almost every song can like benefit from some Tom somewhere. <laughs> like I just feel like they add so much. If I can ever squeeze like pulse toms into my stuff. Oh. That's cool. Uh well I was gonna see what happens when I destroy it. So. <laughs> well maybe keep this and, and also clone it. I let the low pitch chords, I never like tried to do that. Probably the best way to distort things is when, like, it's a clean, um, clean sample. That's when you tend to get, like, the most unique uh, sounds. Yeah. I mean, I also find that, like, just setting them to loop, you know, because that essentially shortens the waveform. So then you're getting whatever kind of weird... Or even, yeah, even shorter than 10, I think. Somewhere around, like, 4, 5, 6. Or even shorter. It's less interesting, obviously, because you've got less of the sample playing. You can always set one of them longer and the other one shorter, you know what I mean? But at least this way it's going to distort. Because you're playing both at the same time. That's why they call this butt music. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's worth changing the pitch to like tick, since we're at such a high tempo that the tick pitch is probably a better range. Like you can actually, <laughs> you'll have real range instead of, you know. Okay, not really. I thought it would be, I thought it would be slower. Well, that's kind of cool. Adding the chord samples in between the noise is such a cool sound. Yeah, it's really, it really elevates the whole track to the level of a butt. What am I looking for here? I'm very sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that sample is perfect. It's a really good, it's really, it's probably because it's got like a bunch of harmonics in it from having the whole chord in that sample. It's not just some random like drum thing. Okay, what was I gonna do? Um, it's actually not too bad. I was just thinking like, it might benefit from some of this kind of rhythmic gating stuff just because, uh. wow, that really did nothing. Is that true? <laughs> oh, we're at volume two, that's why. Why is this not, does this just, it doesn't care about E commands when this table is running? I think so. Whoa. I wish that, um, well, it's essentially doing the same thing as this. What if we just... What? This is wild. Okay, so, sometimes it's like hard to hear a little with this emulator. Maybe just, okay, yeah. I don't know how much, maybe. Oh no, that turns it off like. For some reason, like the volume command is obeyed when it gets to this instrument. But it's not obeyed when it's in the phrase. I wonder if that's a bug. Uh, does that, my question is. Does this have the same effect as this? It does. Which means we can bring out this texture a little more. I just want to see how this sounds. So that's 11. I'll change this right back. Let's see. You mind. No, no, yeah. Sounds good. And then hearing I think two might, um, I don't know. I might like this better if it was like, uh, is this gonna work? No, same problem you ran into. <laughs> Wait, is it? I think that's working. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. So you got know, like this little kind of transient, but it doesn't like completely overwhelm that phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, listen from the top. Yeah. Yeah, is this the case where I think like I just want this to continue basically? Like we don't I don't think this needs to change. I mean, maybe it maybe we could just change something small over here. It, you know, the and yeah, this to something else. Oh. 
cowbell. <laughs> and then have this go here and whatever. Um, yeah. And then change these two, you think? Yeah. Uh, I always hear, like... Like, like all of this stuff happening earlier, somehow. I don't really know. Um... Um, no. Um... Something like that. Uh, can we change the... No, because the loops aren't doing anything. <laughs> uh, um, what's a way to change... We could change the sample. Oh, I, guess there, I guess there is only one sample. I wish I knew what it was. <laughs> um, hmm, okay. And maybe we'll just change this and choose a different kit then. Oh, or the same kit. Oh, but F command should work because this gets added to what's on the table. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay. I'm hearing something else like after. Oh, let me clone this. What if we take. What if we. Uh, how did we. How did we do this before? Maybe we can just delay these here um, a little bit. Just I want it like I want these to kind of like ring out a little more. Like just the intensity to go up just a tiny bit. Uh... Okay.
Um, I heard I heard this kind of glitching in a repeating fashion. Yeah. Um so what I Oh, uh, that's cool. How often would you just like throw something in on any kind of random bar? Almost like that cowbell, but, you know, not like... Do you ever do that, or is it mostly, like, you don't like to break the patterns as much? Because I know you're talking about subverting some stuff. Um, yeah, like, sometimes, like, on the... It's really good to throw something in on, like, the... Th either something on, like, the third measure that sort of messes with you, or, like, the third bar it's all it's all about like patterns of four like you noted right so something on the th like the way i've noticed it is you throw you can throw pretty much anything on on the three once you've established a pattern okay and people won't care <laughs> maybe that's an oversimplification no you know like it, it kind of makes me i used to have this thought that like no matter what you have going on in fours, like whether it's four channels or four kind of like phrases in a row, like you can repeat the same thing three times, I think, but like the fourth thing had better have some interest in it somewhere. So like either if like three channels are going to repeat something, like the fourth channel should probably do something interesting. And like in the same way, like that that's kind of like one pattern that I've noted or like kind of just you know, a rule of thumb that I kept in the back of my brain or whatever. So like, it's cool to hear other stuff too. Like you can do anything on the third repetition. <laughs> yeah. The, um, I guess that's kind of what I found too. Like the, uh, fun, like, which is like that. Um, if they're intense enough, can get a live audience really hype. At least Beast Mode uses it to get audiences hype. <laughs> um, and um, those obviously always go on like the, you put them at the end of two measures and you put them in like the last two bars. Yeah. Right? So, so that's, that's like the fourth thing. Yeah. The, yep. the problem, the problem with this glitchy style of um, electro, I guess is what you, you call it is it like keeps it keeps propelling the patterns forward and forward and yeah. I would I would like to find out a way to incorporate more like um layered style electro or house into this style where it just like it establishes a pattern and then that keeps going and then you layer more and more on top of it oh sure um, I feel like that's less tiring when I hear it in like normal electro, but the, the other problem with the style is like, it's so heavy. It's hard to do something that's like almost restrained like that. Yeah. And the, the other thing is there's like no thickness to the sound. Right. So you can't get like a really hypnotizing bass groove using this style of distorted instruments too. So it's like, th these are problems that I've thought about with my writing style. Like, what I want to do next with this kind of like beast mode style that I've tried to emulate, but <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like its own, like you're, you're sort of like stuck within that paradigm in a way. Like it's, it's harder to kind of branch out. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I'm kind of interested to play with this a little bit more. Cause like, I don't know, I'm, I'm probably going to go back and watch this stream <laughs> and just be like, what happened? What was going on? Like, being in the middle of it now, I, I don't even think I can absorb... I mean, I probably am absorbing it by osmosis and just, like, 
doing it in real time, but like to, to really integrate it into what I, my normal writing is going to take a minute, but this is like, this is, it's been a really fun stream so far. And I'd like to at least write one more measure after this. Then, Yeah, yeah, sure. So if you were if you were gonna do some kind of pulse thing, is that like have you found yourself kind of like trying to keep the pulses out of the way if you're also doing this sort of stuff? Because I've noticed like in a lot of your stuff, you've got the pulse channels like up in the way up or like octave seven, eight, nine, like crazy. Like there's a lot of that kind of stuff. I have um, what I in one of my new songs, I completely throw that out the window and I sort of. I do this style, but I actually bring, I, I totally muddy the frequencies by bringing like the pulses into whatever frequencies I hear in these, these, um, kit sounds <laughs> and it just, and then just like throw a bunch of, um, uh, vibrato on those and also do a similar thing in the noise channel. Where I try, where I try to like do a similar noise to what's going on in these kits, and that sort of creates this cool, unique um, noise distortion effect. So wow. that might that might be the direction is just like going even harder in this like, <laughs> double doubling down, yeah, <laughs> yeah, singular like heavy noisy, um, you know, single channel type type stuff that might be the only direction i can i can go with this but <laughs> i that probably doesn't answer your question but it came to mind i yeah i didn't really have a, a question per se but just interested in that like if the if the motivation for keeping the pulses up high was to try to like clear room for all of the sample distortion uh yeah, I, I mean, I just, I try to find something. The other thing is, like, I just try to find something that sounds not like a Game Boy, right? Yeah. And everything sounds the same up in that high register. So <laughs> yeah, maybe, that's true. So maybe that's, that's why. Why does that do that? Is it uh, what? In what's on this instrument? Is there a table on it? Uh, oh, it's because it's looping. So when it, when you advance the sample, it's getting closer to the end, and it's looping. Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Uh, what, what was I hearing? I guess it's okay. What if we just throw a K, some K commands to kind of gate this a little? I don't know if that's. Oh. What? Why does that happen? Because you're off by one. Oh, that's why. Off by one error. Can you, can you throw a K4 on that last one for me? Just, it doesn't just, have to be on Just both, for you. But. No. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, or we can even take it off entirely. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. From the top.
what uh let's see what if we did something just um i kind of hear like a Yeah, why not? Um, then there was something else that I heard. Oh, it's well, the the tom that makes me laugh every time. It's which <laughs> uh, where's that one? Uh, no, it's not there. It's not there. Where is it? Uh, uh, it must be on one of these like third third things. If anybody remembers where the tom is, here. I think maybe, well, yeah, you put that there. I don't know. Um, let's see. Yeah, it really does need that, huh? Oh, actually, what if we, what if we, um, I'm making this too smart again. All right. Uh, let's see how bad this sounds. I think this this could easily repeat again um and then this obviously could be something else now so not that there's like we don't have that many <laughs> not that many choices I don't know how much I hate it or, or, or hate it or don't hate it. We could always put another. Oh, we have two different kits here, so. Now and, th and and then like this seems like this should probably do something else. What if it just <laughs> like if it just like stopped and then something else happened here? Um. Let's see what's going on on this one. Uh, what a, um, a zero. Um, will this work? Yeah. Uh, it might sound better to do like more discreet kind of jumps. Oops. What's our thing on here? It is on 
fast. So this could easily also do like. Although it kind of loses this. Yeah, I like the we we've done enough pitch shifts in these sound effects. <laughs> Lay off it. It's we get it. Oh well, I guess we can't go that much farther. We go backwards. Oh yeah. <laughs> um here's so this is where you would normally play i i actually um i subvert this part so much that i don't think i have it in like many of my songs anymore but this is where you would normally put like your uh uh your um cheesy buildup or it's it's at least that's where like beast mode would put his cheesy buildups right okay but then um, if you're not gonna do a buildup then what what else could you do here that would like subvert that uh another um you would you would either do something like very short like a bridge between sections or uh -huh. you would just go and do something uh completely different like with um with zeta facts like if we're comparing this to zeta facts i could have gone in that direction with uh or not zeta facts um crap what's what's that song called first song on my album uh, <laughs> oh speaking of which yeah we should definitely tell people to buy your album it's not you know. I think we should tell people not to buy my album. <laughs> um, oh, it's not the first song on my album. Okay, so JSX. Uh, like what I what I did there was um, I forget that. Anyways, um, what I did there was I uh, I completely switched it up into a completely different um, thing, and okay. then I um, and this is the approach that trying to subvert things I end up taking anyways is. I started combining the first section back into the second section to sort of like make a hybrid groove. Oh, right. That's cool. That, that kind of takes forever here. I don't know if it would uh, really work either. Is that where you would maybe like alternate bars? Cause like then you can have like one bar of the previous pattern and then one bar of the new thing. Or is it more like actually trying to combine them both into the same like pattern, like the same phrase, like yeah. merging both things into the same phrase? Yeah, I forget what I did with JSX. Um, it might have been a little bit of both. Yeah. Nice. Um, actually, let's see what this sounds like when it goes back to the first pattern. I mean, I think it sounds great. <laughs> um, yes, I want to. I want to. Uh, I do want to do that. I want to give it a little bit more room to breathe. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm so tempted to change those drums, <laughs> but it's good at this point. It's going to take a long time to fix. <laughs> So what did I hear here? Yeah, what you find a lot is that... I find myself doing this, I don't know if this is a general rule, but I find myself switching a lot between, um, like, leaving... Uh, this part open and not like um i find if you if you're doing something here a lot of the times it sounds better to just like leave this blank 
on the next one. Sure. Okay. So like leaving the end of one empty because the end of four, like on the previous bar was filled. So it's kind of like, just like syncopation stuff. Cause you're like talking about the offbeat. So it's like shifting your offbeat placement from the beginning of the bar to the end of the bar, the end of the previous bar. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do that a lot. That's interesting. <laughs> that is groovy. That's like butt music right there. Finally. And then it sound it ends up sounding self-referential and, and good if you get it right. Like My tendency on this kind of stuff is always like I want to turn the beat around. Like I want to put, you know, the the kicks on two and four and the snares on one and three, or like have something weird happening. And like I've it I've been watching like some of those some of my decisions getting turned. Like you're like no, I don't want to. I don't hear that. <laughs> I hear something like more repetitive. So like I think it's interesting that like my like I need to expand how I'm hearing stuff uh, weirdly like expanded into stuff that's actually simpler than what, I, what I'm hearing um yeah I think I I hear that stuff on um bills and stuff too maybe what I'm doing a little bit is um uh, I think it takes uh it takes time to make that work and make it flow properly so that it finds the beat again. Yeah. Um, I, I'm probably just shutting it down because I, uh, on a live stream, I don't want to mess with that too much. <laughs> I just um, had a thought that I, I like, this is kind of out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, go ahead. on this, wherever, uh, what if instead of a V command, you had a C command? Is that, <laughs> It's also so fast that like Oh yeah. Ha! Uh here. Maybe just like something that that different or whatever. Uh Yeah. I sort of ruined that second <laughs> Um let me, do you hear anything here? Uh let's see. Oh hold on. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm destroying this uh bar before it does any damage to the song. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did, uh, yeah, I was like, I did make this different, right? <laughs> uh, how horrible is this? Yeah, that is pretty bad. It really needs to go here, I think.
Uh, no, it's it's not working out how I thought it might. <laughs> But I did like this better when it was whatever it was. What? I thought this would work. Okay. It might work. It might work if you put one seven and then two B. Oh, okay. Slightly better. I, I hear it. Keep going. I don't know if this actually will work. <laughs> that that could work in context. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, that'll work as, as long as we keep um, glitching it out like that, I think. Nice. I'm just looking for sounds that I don't hear much. That is potential. Oh, that was right here. Uh, <laughs> I think that sounds fine. Uh, uh, I think that might work. Uh, that was not what I meant to do. I had the idea at the last minute to move that here. Um, I'm just gonna save that for later. <laughs> I don't know. I heard I heard like a glitch in the next section, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know now what I was hearing. Let's play it from the top. Okay, I just thought of something. Uh, this is this might be crazy, but what if um, deep clone? Well, I don't I don't necessarily want to because these are mostly the same. So let me deep clone. Oops, let me deep clone this one, and then I I immediately forgot what I was trying to do here. <laughs> uh, you okay. said you said three, this eight, might be crazy. Three five, three eight, three five. Is there was there a over here? No. Okay. So this is three. 
three, eight, three, five. So then this one was the same as five. Okay. So my thought was just make this a closed hat <laughs> and don't bring in the snare until the next chain basically or okay, or cool. or possibly or possibly longer so actually mm -hmm. both of these that that was my idea uh it's like a little too light though it's like not uh, heavy enough you could do double um double bass drums oh that's but, true or a bass uh, uh, I feel I do feel like it needs to be something else. Not a tom, not a crash. This is probably also not enough. I think a clap is also it's just got the same energy as the snare. But what if uh, what if we what if maybe we just Not a snare until there. Until there. Uh, actually, uh, is, is, I'm like, is there a way to like do something insane or? Maybe like this. This is kind of in the theme of glitchy. Um, can we lower the, is this on volume two? No, it's on three. Maybe it will, uh, will it obey the volume two here? Or what if we turn this off and it would be half as loud? Okay, that, that could potentially work. Uh, and maybe this is bad. I have no idea. Uh, and yeah, and that. Oops, sorry. Um. It does seem like that. It just kind of like sucks the momentum out of it. Maybe what I really want is just like a different kit. We'll go back to my 808 idea. And just play the 808 snare. It's just... Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's what I want. Like to Then the, the snare gets more aggressive. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think it's coming along. I like how when it gets to here, it goes back to this, which is actually I could have just, or well, it's not quite the same. It sounds more similar to the 808 snare, so it's kind of like a you know throwback to this, which is kind of cool. I think. You won't want that uh, bass drum back. I'm just gonna go and put it back if you're okay with that. Yeah.
I feel like that section really hurts uh, with that. Like, I don't think a different bass drum is wrong, but I don't think that one's powerful enough. Yeah, no, it's fine. I didn't, I don't even think I noticed the difference. I, every time we hit that section, I just feel like the energy Drops. goes down. Yeah. Un, unintentionally. Right. And it's yeah, not, we'll still, we'll still have this sprinkled in here. And I think that often sounds better. It's a nice Dude. way to, to change things up with that. Like, be, like, because we don't have that much room to play around with volume. <laughs> so just choosing like a lower volume sample is a good way to manage that. We think this needs, and I think, um, I don't think this should mess too much with the other sessions. Great. That makes such a big difference. Yeah, this is fun for me. It's, just, it's been a while since I did a song like this. Or any song for that. <laughs> okay, there was something I was thinking, and it was in relation to some of the crashes that I put in here. I was thinking like maybe it would be fun to put some R commands on these. Um Also, um, I don't know. You might be like, no, don't do it. But <laughs> all right, we could even. Th this like to me, I don't. To me, it's like a little. Uh, just uh, like I kind of want something else here, maybe. Um, And here, like, I don't know. Now, like, hearing these crashes with no... Yeah. With no glitching on them. <laughs> Just, like, is a little jarring. Okay, uh... Uh, like, and... I don't know if... Yeah. What? Um, the, if you go to the second bar here, uh, just a, a minor thing. Oh, um, yeah. The one. Yeah. I think that 14 needs to be volume two, uh, just before I forget it. It is. It is. Oh, it <laughs> might need to be volume one. That, that is just like a little. Too we could always just kill it. Or, or just use just use half the the sample yeah yeah this is this is awesome well uh how are you feeling about it like well, how about we maybe wrap it up here yeah sounds good to me awesome yeah, yeah that was oh, a lot of fun this is this is way fun uh i'm gonna save state here just so that i've got this file there our song, oh, yeah, our song won't go away <laughs> um thanks everybody for hanging out with us and i know that like 
you've written a lot of this stuff, or at least comparatively, when you think about writing LSDJ songs, like it's hard. I feel like it's hard to like churn churn them out, really. But but I feel like there could be more of this stuff, and I wouldn't be tired of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, so it's still cool to like write this glitchy butt music, um, because. I think that there's not enough people doing this kind of thing out there. Um, that that includes me. So, uh, yeah, this is a lot of fun, and thanks for joining me. So we should probably aim to do it again sometime. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'd be happy to do this again and play more bug music. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. I uh, hope everybody had a good time, and um, we'll see you all soon. <laughs>